I was cleaning house last night and I was catching up on podcasts and I listened to a lore episode that when this airs, it will not be the newest lore episode, but almost because that asshole only releases every two weeks or whatever. (laughs) It's always like, do you want more lore in your life? Yes, motherfucker. I want you to do a podcast every week. (laughs) That's what I want from you. Yes, Aaron Mankey. Get on it. You know, he's semi like us. He's got uh, eight different projects going on or uh-huh. whatever, except for his are way more successful. So. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. He was so funny, too, because at the end of his episode, it was like their four year anniversary. And wow. he was like, I know the earlier episodes were rough. And I'm like, I love those first few episodes. Yeah. It rough my ass. They were phenomenal. Like yeah. you were letting out legends and connecting it with historical facts that I just was like blown away. So I I hope that he sees value in like his earlier episodes. It's his mid episodes that were annoying. (laughs) Um, Yeah, he's absolutely at this point in his career, he's found the hook. He starts and ends almost exactly the same way. It's very methodical. You know exactly his lead up, you know his character, you know exactly what's going to happen. And eh, I've stopped listening to lore. And it's not because of that. Honestly, I I like his stories. It's just that I have so many other things going on that lore just kind of took a a back seat. Not for me. (laughs) The point of my story is an episode that I listened to. He talked about the haunting of the White House. I was like, well, now we'll never be able to talk more about Abe Lincoln because <laughs> he's touching on it, which he's touched on it on the past. That's how I knew about the Doppler Ganger and stuff like that. But there was something that was told in the episode that I listened to that I had not heard before. And again, just heightens my love for Abe Lincoln and Mary Todd coolest badass couple in the world i think they're almost time travelers how advanced they were i believe that um hang on a second do you mind before though um you tell any more about the story that we introduce our podcast oh no (laughs) i do mind (laughs) i really want to hear more about this but i would like to tell everyone that this is this is our podcast it's called creatures of the night and you're wendy (laughs) yeah I'm Wendy and you're Chris. And I'm Chris. That's right. So yes. now that you're all here with us on the same page, please continue. Yes. Let's go back to recapping a different <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so he said that Mary Todd, after she had lost two sons, I really think after just kind of the first one, but definitely after the blow of losing the second child, they started to do, and it was during the height of the spiritualist movement and everything, which we we knew this, we all talked about this before, that she liked to do seances and whatnot. And that was how she was dealing with her grief. Totally support all of that. Oh, 100%. Yes. So she was hanging out with this dude, which I've already forgotten the name. And that's why you got to go listen to Aaron Makey, not me. And uh, she was hanging out with this dude who was a psychic, basically. And he was performing these um, seances with her and giving her this information. And at some point, he was trying to get money out of her and get things out Uh, of her. You know, how uh, he's got to make a living. So, but he, he wanted some kind of train pass. That's a weird thing to ask for, but he wanted that a train weird. pass that would like is like unlimited train rides, which is if somebody was like, you can get unlimited flights wherever you want it. I mean, like, I'd, yeah, I'd okay. for sure blackmail somebody for that. <laughs> and, and that's what he was trying to do. He was like, I'm going to tell everybody that Mary's into these seances and shit in the White House and expose the Abe Lincoln family and being some fucking weirdos, you know, or whatever, if you don't get me this damn train pass. So Mary Todd tells Abe Lincoln, and this is what a badass he was. He was like, fuck that noise. That's not going to happen. And so he exposed the dude as like a fraud to other people. He like helped set up a situation where they were going to call this guy out during a seance and turn on the lights because, you know, they used to do seances and it was so silly because they were like, let's all get together for a party right hanging around this table now everybody we're going to turn the lights off you are not to do this you are not to do that you can't think for yourselves basically we're going to give you the impression that ghosts are playing musical instruments in front of you right that type thing and so he got busted out and then uh he's mad at the lincolns and he used to hang out at a bar the spiritualist guy yeah the medium he used to hang out at a bar and he hung out with this dude it was his drinking buddy and then he 
talked to him one day, the drinking buddy was like really mad at all the things that the president were, was doing and everything. And he actually threatened to kill the president. So the guy goes back to Abe Lincoln and he's like, I got something to tell you. You know, I've foreseen your future. This is what's going to happen. You really need to watch out for yourself. Well, this Damn. was not Abe Lincoln's first death threat. So he was <laughs> Like, yeah, whatever. Don't give a shit. Uh, do you know whose drinking buddy was? Oh, God. Don't tell me he was an actor. He was an actor. He oh, was... <laughs> no. Did his last name start with a B? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He had his life intertwined with the man that actually did end up killing him. And I'm sure lots of people threatened Abe Lincoln's life. So it's just kind of funny that it all connected. Wow. I more so just loved the story yeah. of how Abe Lincoln was like, yeah, I don't care. You could go ahead and try to tell the world and, and you're not going to blackmail us. He, that's how cool he was is like, no, I'm going to do the right thing. Actually don't care about what other people think about me. Um, You're not going to treat us like this and you're not going to get something for free. That is really cool that he turned that shit around on him. It is also really scary that that, guy is the one that ended up assassinating him yeah but it's also his version of the story what oh. if he was in on that shit too yeah he might have been yeah totally. what if he was like yeah you should totally get them because they never got me my train pass i need it you know for sure wow i'll uh do you want me to tell you a story <laughs> yes i do okay so you've heard this story before <laughs> so it's not much new for you, but maybe a reminder because it's an oldie but a goodie. So those. my story tonight is about a location that we we mentioned on a previous podcast and a listener actually asked about it on social media. And I was kind of vague with them in my response because I kind of I just I just was like, oh, wow. I don't think I can give them mm. all the details in a comment reply. You know, this really deserves like a deeper conversation than that. Oh, boy. It was a pretty impactful location for us, even though this is not a location that's on some kind of top 10 most haunted places type list or anything. It was still pretty impressive to us. And I bet to other people that have been there, <laughs> I'm sure you would agree that we adore all our past investigations. All the locations that we've been to have brought us memorable moments. We've been, and I, I'm certain I've said this before because I definitely think it all the time, but we've been very fortunate enough to go to some pretty amazing locations to travel to these places and get to experience just some super mind-blowing supernatural events. There's definitely been some takeaway from all of the places that we've been. Always. You never leave empty, completely empty-handed. There's always something that you're like, wow, I didn't know that could happen or that's the way <laughs> that would be or that's how we would experience it. Even if yeah. it felt like, shit, that night was quiet as fuck. And then you review evidence and you're like, wow, they were screaming at us the whole time and we didn't right. hear them or whatever. And then you right. connect it to maybe something small that had happened. Oh, remember, I remember I felt like a weird thing or I felt a cold breeze or just something. Yeah. They've, they've all given us something and we've been really fortunate to have a lot of different types of supernatural experiences. So that it's been really cool. But this location that I'm going to talk about, when we went there, we were still pretty green. We were new to this. So the experience that we had here really contributed to fueling that excitement and that drive to explore more and more. We started road tripping and renting out whole facilities, at, you know, after we ran out of all the local spots that we could go to. But even after all these famously haunted locations, I still can't stop thinking about how powerful the experience was at this location. So my story is of the Chickasaw Ordnance Works property are better known to us and most everyone in West Tennessee, the smokestacks <laughs> of Millington, Tennessee. Now, before Chris has a damn heart attack, <laughs> I'm going to let out a disclaimer. The area that we're speaking of is private property. You should not enter without permission from the owner. I will not disclose how we access the area. I believe now that we don't live in the state and it's been years since this investigation, the statute of limitations has to have run out. 
<laughs> of any wrongdoing that we might have done. Plus, you know, that was Chris and Wendy that did this. And tonight, you and I, we're, we're going to be Trish and Tina again. <laughs> so that Trish and Tina. Yep. I don't know what those, that girl, Wendy and Chris, they've done, <sighs> but we're not a part of that. If any officers come knocking on our door, I don't know anything about this. I wasn't there. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the smokestacks. They're so eerie. It's a local legend-ish, I guess you'd say, that uh, if you're from that area, it's it's a very eerie spot. So people won't get it really so much unless they get there, unless they're there, I mean. And But we'll, we'll try to tell them the story so they can get the vibe for it. So also before we get into all those paranormal experiences we had and all the crazy haunted shit that goes on there, I got to give you the history lesson first. So the powder plant was originally conceived in 1940 by an organization called the Anglo-French Purchasing Board during World War II. They formed the Tennessee Powdered Company to produce munitions such as new kinds of smokeless gunpowder, first for the French, and then once they surrendered during World War II, the British assumed control of the company. A change in hands took place in 1941 when the U.S. entered the war. As a result, the mighty industrial empire of E.I. DuPont D. Nemours? Nemours? It is spelled N-E-M-O-U-R-S. It sounds very French, So, but they said they're an industrial empire. I don't know who they are. Uh, but this company took over the plan and operated it for the U.S. Army. They created a huge sprawling complex, over 6,000 acres. It was a few miles west of present-day Highway 51. Wow. The Mid-South, believe it or not, played a huge strategic role in World War II. In addition to the naval station and the air base that's in Millington, the second U.S. Army had headquarters at the Mid-South Fairgrounds. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I wonder if that's how Liberty Land got its name. <laughs> Random thought, but... That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the Defense Depot was one of the largest military distribution centers in America. It was opened in South Memphis. And the Kennedy General Hospital opened on Park and Shotwell. Have you ever heard of Shotwell Road in Memphis? Nope. Yep. Me neither. Because <laughs> someone realized that's a horrible ass name for a street with a hospital on it. So they quickly changed it from Shotwell Road to Getwell Road. I've heard of that one. Right. So it's Park and Getwell, which we would know. So just so you know, the Kennedy Hospital has nothing to do with the Marine Hospital, the old Marine Hospital that's next to the Metal Museum. Just if people start to wonder that, that's not where the old Marine Hospital is. Uh, that location, the old Marine Hospital, is like a dream fucking location of mine. It's one of those like a beautiful abandoned buildings that you see. And it's just like it's been untouched forever and all the even secondary buildings outside of the hospital are still intact, but they're wood, and it's just gorgeous. Now, that one had something to do with the yellow fever victims, didn't it? Yes, yes. They had that going on there, too. I think it opened as a Marine hospital, and then it was, you know, when they weren't using it, the military wasn't using it, it was open to yellow fever patients as well. But it's for sale, and it has been for sale for a really long time, and the owners don't seem to be at all interested in paranormal investigators going in there because yeah. they don't allow that shit. The Metal Museum used to kind of be into it and do ghost hunts, and then they even got out of that, too, because it used to be a part of the museum. I actually, when I lived in Memphis, called the owners of it and uh, left them a voicemail. I may or may not have implied that we were some big time tour company that would have <laughs> brought them a lot of business and we were willing to pay, you know, mega fees or whatever to get into their hospital. They did not return my phone call. Ah, they checked you out. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just not really into it. So, Well, when you gave them the address of dirty at AOL.com, they were like, hmm. <laughs> 
I think something fishy is going on here. <laughs> uh, so Kennedy Hospital has nothing to do with the old Marine Hospital, just FYI on that. Uh, Kennedy Hospital has since been replaced by like other buildings. It's kind of in the University of Memphis area. So even though these facilities played a great part in the war effort, none were as dangerous as the Chickasaw Ordnance Works, which produce raw TNT and gunpowder packed with wow. high explosive cakes called gun cotton. I have no idea really what they mean by <sighs> cakes or even gun cotton. I read the description. It started sounding like some mansplaining to me. I didn't know what they were talking about. It was like some something about some wax-like thing in a barrel that once you detonate it, it's the, the whole damn thing explodes like bam. It sounded like oh, some wow. Bugs Bunny type shit. I don't really know. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that was produced yes. at the plant that was there in Millington? Yep, they wow. just got raw Ooh. TNT all laying around. So much so that the uh, powder plant employees could be fired if they were carrying matches, lighters, yeah. or even ballpoint pens. Why? Because a simple click from the pen could spark a... Could ignite? Yes. That's some MacGyver type shit. Like... How far away did they have to park? Because <laughs> that shit could ignite a fire. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. They probably oh had God. to, like walk all the way into work or whatever this sounds and like don't fucking run <laughs> <laughs> i mean and there's static too much static in the air you're done for. it's over <laughs> damn their rules are yeah no ballpoint pens so i guess it was lead they they could only use but you couldn't sharpen your pencils too quickly really though if you work at a powder plant like like what do you need? what do you need a pen for i'm sure you're working with whatever they got in front of you you're not taking notes Right. I mean, somebody has to be actually, though. So uh, I don't know. It sounds fucking dangerous, and I well, don't want to work there. It's definitely not there anymore. So <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, but surprisingly, despite the deadly work environment, there were actually <laughs> only one reported death from the plant, and that information actually just came from the individual's family. There weren't actually any documentation from state information that I looked through right. or the company information that this happened. But it's also a military base or grounds, right? It's military yeah. grounds, right? So it's going to be pretty difficult to find any information on that guy. Exactly. Like some stuff is kept in like top secret bases and everything like that. So out of respect for the family that says that this person passed working here from a, an explosion and just just for the simple fact that I may not fucking know what I'm talking about. And there's total, there's totally documentation out there about an explosion. And I just missed it somewhere on the internet. Uh, we're going to tell this lady's story. So Miss Rena Wildly from Gold Lake Township, Arkansas, moved to the area in the 1940s because Rena's father had passed away. She went to work at the Chickasaw Ordinance Works to help support her mother back home in Arkansas. Hmm. A lot of employees, if not damn near all of them, were women during the war. Raina is said to have been killed, like I said, by a small explosion, oh. however— the family doesn't have a date of when this happened. And then, like I said, the company doesn't report that any accident happened. Ooh, that sounds like a cover-up. Exactly. Not to mention, this was a huge fucking play. There were 8,000 employees. And I know mm. I use 8,000 as an example a lot of time. I'm being honest. That was actually in the paper. I think <laughs> like the... Didn't you earlier say that it covered like 6,000 miles? Yeah, it was huge. And there really were like 8,000 employees. There was one article that said there were over 100 buildings, Jeez. including a chemical laboratory, a mixing plant, a storage magazine, <laughs> a medical department, a railroad terminal, a fire department, oh. and even a cafeteria, well, which, fun note, Pig & Whistle, like, took care of the cafeteria. <laughs> Do you know what Pig & Whistle is? I fucking love Pig & Whistle. <laughs> I love Pig & Whistle, too. Oh, my it's, God. It's got to be just a local thing, right, in Memphis? Yeah, it's totally local to Memphis. Yeah. It's got to okay. be. Maybe, so. maybe it reached out to, uh, like, Arkansas or Mississippi, yeah, but it's yeah. definitely down there. Yeah, 
It's a southern thing. And they this company was so huge that Pig and Whistle ran the damn cafeteria. I thought that was fucking cool. That is amazing. That Best damn, lunch I really ever Hell yes, <laughs> they're fucking Barbecue nachos are the bomb. Oh, they are so good. Oh that my god, the best thing there. I forgot all about that. When you were going through the list of the things that were like in the the hundred buildings, I'm like, I sure as fuck hope those buildings weren't side by side. And then you got to the fire department. I'm like, okay, yeah, they can be there. They can be <laughs> next to every one of those buildings. And then you said cafeteria. And I'm like, uh, oh no, they do not need to be on. The, you know, because <laughs> you talk about you can't have a ballpoint pen, but yet they're smoking I, fucking pork oh, all day. They're smoking like the best. <laughs> pork too oh my god but no ballpoint pens because of all the ammunitions and live tnt and shit that's laying around that's, that's so weird that's why they needed the yeah. six thousand acres so they oh, could put wow. the cafeteria was... at the edge of the property <laughs> i gotta go yeah. to lunch but i'll be back in three hours <laughs> i have to walk too because... oh my maybe god a bike. maybe you can take a bike man by the time you get to pig and whistle you have worked up a serious appetite oh yeah you're gonna work that shit off when you go back too so that's really actually a cool deal which i think that work <laughs> so anyways they also had eight artesian wells drawing 22 million gallons of water a day i don't know what they were doing with all this there were also said to be odd-looking um, buildings called poacher tub houses and save-all tanks. Uh, they were seen in some top secret. I'm doing air quotes because they're not that top secret. If some dude named William Burke could just walk up to Wilmington, Del Delaware, and look through the company's archives and find these pictures because that's what happened. Huh. But he called them top secret even though they were totally on display in the company's archives. So weird. Yeah. Their archives or whatever must have been like a filing cabinet, like in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Cause this research was like, look, y'all I'm bored waiting around for my appointment. I'm just going to pilfer through your filing yeah, cabinets here and like, see what I can at find. These weird photos of buildings. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. uh, so, uh, so these two types of things I'm talking about, I am not going to explain this very well to you, but they sound, well, no, for sure, they housed super, super explosive chemicals, just like the whole place did. But they sounded like they housed kind of experimental type explosives because it, it sounded like they were testing and working on them and they were super sensitive. It, from the stuff that I read, which was documents that had been scanned into a computer. So they were like original documents written about these things, scanned into the computer, and they weren't necessarily, they were in a scientific language that I'm kind of like, I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds <laughs> something like these chemicals had to be like temperature controlled. And I got the impression that they needed to be like, uh, in some kind of motion or something like that, because it almost sounds like they put them in like baths or something to keep them warm and to keep kind of just motion flowing through these chemicals. I don't know. Maybe I just made that up in my head that there's chemicals that are like that, <laughs> but that it sounds, sounds like basically this plant was working on n like the next best thing to to win the war type thing. Yes. I don't know if they ever used any of this shit. Uh, I don't think they did. But they were definitely, they were playing with some chemicals trying to find out like how they could end this. And, and during a time like that, World War II, such a devastating time in the, you know, I can't even imagine uh, the fear in everybody's mind. Right. And so they were really trying to advance their knowledge and get to like what what was going to protect them ultimately right. in the end. So with all these buildings and the fact that this plant had a documented 871 days that they had worked around the clock. Oh, my God. Night and day. And then also, I should mention this, the plant won awards for their like time between like accidents, they work consecutively for this long. And so it's kind of like when you're working night and day for that long, you could see where like some documentation of an accident might get missed. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that girl got hurt and they, they carted her off to the hospital right away and she died at the hospital. So she didn't die on site or anything like that. So they don't count it. They're like, not it. Right. That didn't happen. 
she could have died from anything in the hospital. Damn. Like the super ridiculous explosives that she works around. Right. But uh, like I was about to say, they won awards for how long they had went without any accident. And so I think it's very possible that there's some very competitive like safety director that didn't want to ruin their his or her record. You know, and so they just kind of like that didn't happen here. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Right. I don't know anything about that. So her family says she passed away in an explosion at the plant. However, Tennessee records don't seem to document that. But I could see how it could easily be missed. Damn. That sucks. It does for her. And also adds to that kind of aiding in haunting. You know, by her death not being recognized and whatnot. Right. The truth being withheld, yeah. for, especially from the family. You know, if the family's looking for the details, they, they want to be able to move on and they want to cope with what has happened. They can't fully, if they're not given all of that information, if, if the family, you know, is only told it might have happened here, but they're not sure, they can't fully, like, let go. And, and, and neither can a spirit. You know, you wouldn't be able to rest if your shit was withheld. Yeah. And you think about the times, like, okay, so this is not like it was the 1840s. This is the 1940s. So it's not like it was forever ago, but it, we weren't that super in advanced. And so her family's all back in Arkansas. She only really has her mother. I think her, she had a brother, but I think her brother went off to war too. I'm not really sure if he made it through that or not, but he wasn't around during this time. And she goes off to this like kind of strange area and she's all on her own. And then all of a sudden you just don't hear from her anymore. I mean, she didn't have any family. So, cause it sounds like the family doesn't even have a date of when this happened. They just know they stopped hearing from their daughter. Wow. Man. And I'm sure nobody from work like bothered to inform them. No, oh, they were working around the clock around like super stressful fucking environment. Yeah. You know, they maybe they didn't even speak to each other. I mean, who knows? I, I mean, that's I'm sure it's not really that way, but I'm just saying nobody probably knew all her personal information to get back to the family and be like, hey, you know, uh, Raina didn't make it like this is what happened. Yeah. But the family does seem to believe that she passed away in a small explosion at this plant and I feel like that's very plausible that it got missed or something like that however so there is some documented cases of issues happening there while the plant claims that they existed for so long without any kind of problems there was this one thing that happened very very near the plant though not on the plant thank god I think it would have started like a nuclear bomb kind of reaction so the morning of April 8th 1944, a B-24 uh, Liberator bomber took off from Millington Air Base carrying a crew of 10 headed for Florida. Oh. The plane had engine trouble uh, as they flew over the powder plant, and it exploded and crashed in the field just west of it. So that's what I meant by, like, can you fucking imagine had that thing landed on the plant oh with God. all the thousands of barrels of TNT and no. stuff. There'd be like a crater that we would have visited it instead of yeah. the smoke. Millington bags. would have had its own version of that Grand Canyon. Probably not oh, as huge, God. but it would have been I don't know. Massive. It sounds it sounds pretty bad. Maybe where like where we lived wouldn't even exist it. Like all of that would have just been Yeah. So about this plane crash that happened, it had a crew of ten. Only one parachuted to safety. Wow, really? Yeah. The rest of the crew did die in that crash. <gasps> the dude that parachuted to safety, he was rushed to Kennedy Hospital Whoa. and was for his injuries. Did they only have one parachute on board? I mean, did he get the longest straw? I don't really know. It didn't say which crew member he necessarily was huh. that parachuted to safety, but I, I feel like he's not the pilot because I read this comment that the pilot did die. Okay. And, um, and actually that this other paranormal investigator feels like they connected with the pilot and got his name hmm. during an investigation on the location. Anyway, so when the war ended, nobody could decide what to do with 
this fucking plant. They, it was, they felt it was too dangerous to kind of turn into anything else. So, and they didn't really need a giant plant creating, you know, all these munitions for war. So they dismantled the plant slowly and 19, they started in 1946 and then the remaining structures just kind of fell into ruins after that. Yeah. A lot of the buildings were made out, out of kind of temporary type materials. So the stuff that's left there that we have seen, that's what they couldn't really take away. And then they were also just like, oh, don't care. We'll just leave that. Yeah. I mean, it all looked like concrete. Yeah. Like or stone or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So they left that behind, but they had took, taken down all the kind of metal or wood type materials and then they just vamped out. This is where the Chickasaw Ordinance work fades into the past and floats into the world of like local legends and lore that we knew of. While we both lived in the area, because we lived probably 10 or 15 minutes down the road from this area, this was one of those scary, dark places that had all kinds of stories coming from it. Many people had gone there and had strange feelings and heard voices, but like, why? You know, what was haunting the area? What was causing this activity? We weren't really sure until we had already been there. We heard stories that there was a huge explosion at the plant and that everyone was killed. Right. And we heard stories of a traveling homeless man that murdered yeah. like women and children and threw their bodies down in the wells or the abandoned wells. And then we heard stories of satanic worshiping groups that performed rituals in the wooded areas around the ruins. Mm -hmm. But there's no proof of a serial killer that had been dumping bodies in the area. We didn't encounter any groups of people doing rituals out there. However, I'm sure, I mean, that, yeah, would be a hard thing to document, you know, <laughs> whether people were out there doing that kind of thing or not. Unless there's some nosy neighbor that's called the police multiple times because they see, like, cloaked people with animal True. skulls on their head, wow. like, chasing things and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I would. I would report that shit if I saw it. Oh, yeah. And then lock every door and grab a gun. I don't know. I might just film it and put it on YouTube and be like, "Did you, do you see what happened fucking today? Nope. That's insane. I saw some crazy rednecks coming out of the woods wearing skulls, <laughs> dripping with blood. Uh, nope, nope, now, nope. <laughs> you add the redneck element to it, I'm like, yeah, I'll call the police on that. Yeah, I'd be calling the cops. Well, somebody better check that shit out. <laughs> Make sure all your cats are indoors. <laughs> I don't really know. Um. Right. But there were never any reports of stuff like that. So lots of people said that people went out there and did satanic worship, but but there were actually no police phone calls about it or anything. And there there's no documented proof that there was an explosion like that. And there was no documented right. proof that there was some serial killer dumping bodies. So again, why? Why is this happening in this place and what's so scary about it? I found comments on the internet that uh, some locals had posted that a young boy had died there in the 80s due to like accidental gunfire. Uh, the person that had commented on this was he actually claimed to be a family friend of the boy. And then another comment I saw also about a little boy that had drowned in a nearby pond, though the pond is not necessarily where the ruins are. It's not too terribly far away from it. And those two stories of the little boy stands out to me and I'm sure you, but... I'll have to explain that in just a moment. So, and, and we did not know that going into this because like I said in the beginning, this is a place that we have been to before. We visited the smokestacks for the first time in like a late February night in 2011, eight years ago. That was February? Yeah. It seems so warm out. <laughs> oh, you know, man. that's like global warming for you, but... <laughs> Also, that's actually just the South for you that decides yeah, when so. it's winter and when it's summer. So the the woods there are very thick and there's very few lights on the streets around. So it's pretty fucking dark. So when you pull up, it has no problem. This area has no problem invoking that kind of like terrifying feeling to you of I don't know what I'm about to walk myself into. Mm -hmm. I kind of saw the smokestacks sticking out from the trees, but I really have no idea where I'm going. We park up to the gate 
we go in to the area. It's like an open field. And then you're walking towards the smokestacks, but you really don't know where you're going. We had never been there during the day. And we had just heard all these stories about satanic worship and, and murderers dumping bodies there and stuff like that. I don't, I don't remember much about like walking up to the wooded area. Maybe you do. And this is where you can start chiming in. Like, yes, I wrote things and I noted evidence that we had, but it's been so long that it has been a long from time. the walk to the car to where the trees kind of took over and they were on either side of us. I don't really remember what that was like. I mean, I think it was kind of just like a walk in the dark and it wasn't that yeah. bad. Um, we took it slow, but I don't remember too much activity happening. Not on the way there. I remember it seemed to be kind of like a path. There were trees that were on either side of us and it almost seemed like it was a covering. Yeah. You, you're in an open field and you can't really see anything. And then you walk into this wooded path or this, you walk onto this path that's cut between the woods and you can even start to see mm -hmm. the bottom of the smokestacks. Right. Uh, so you're you're like, oh, we're here. This is the ruins, right? But when we got to that wooded area, all of a sudden there was a rush of movement yeah. in the trees to our left. And I remember like, you know, we had read about these uh, satanic worshipers and I'm like, shit, did we just interrupt their party? Are they about to go bananas? Or more likely, this is a fucking deer that's about to come out of nowhere. Oh my God, I totally remember that. <laughs> or hopefully, fingers crossed, some small animal small. that doesn't have like razor sharp teeth coming at us, you know? Just a fat bunny. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we just stirred up something uh, and that's all that's going on here. Not a big just, deal, yeah. right? My cousin was with us and she's a longtime paranormal investigator. She's my older cousin. She's been into this. We are probably the only two in our family that are weirdos like this, but she has her own paranormal group. It's called the Southern Paranormal of Tennessee or TN. So you can look them up. She does her own thing. I'm not going to like spew her name on this podcast or anything like that because I don't know how she feels about it. Uh, but she was with us that night and she was a total fucking badass because when this noise happens in the <laughs> woods and I freeze solid, like just ready to let this Wolverine like eat you and me. I mean, cause that's just how horrible I am. She starts yelling out to yeah. it and like clapping and doing like all those things, like making noises. Oop, I just super bad hit my mic. Um, making all of those, like these loud noises and stuff and doing all these things you're supposed to do when animals are about to attack right. you. And I was just like, what the fuck <laughs> the whole she time. Did. So, but in the heat of the moment, like when I thought a deer was rushing us in the woods and it's your life and my life on the line. And I guess my cousins too, but she seemed like she could handle herself. I was just like frozen, <laughs> not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, as soon as she does this, makes all these loud noises and stuff like that and yells at it, the sound just stops. Yeah. It just, it just completely stopped. And so in my mind, the whole time I'm like, that didn't seem normal. And I don't think that's a fucking animal. Right. That's when I started to get super paranoid because the noise, like it completely reacted to the way that your cousin was acting and it stayed there. And I'm like, are we about to die? <laughs> <laughs> because it's that thing when you progress in paranormal ex exploration, you know, and it, it, the experiences kind of advance with time you're like, is this when I meet my maker? Right. Is this when the, I realize that the spirits can really harm you and attack you? Because I hear physical fucking movement and then all of a sudden just nothing. nothing. But obviously we will note we were out in the great outdoors and it's very possible that it was an animal. So I, I give people the benefit of the doubt to say, yeah, you dummies, you were outside. It could, it was an animal. And then as soon as you scared it, it just kind of stopped what it was doing and froze in its place. I froze in my place. I mean, and I also watch my cat do that shit all the time there. She's ready to attack. And then you catch her like, hey, I'm watching you. And then she just freezes and dart, darts off or lays down, you know, and gives up. 
So, I mean, maybe deer do that. I don't know. I've never seen that scenario. All I know is that we stood there for a while afterwards and there was no more fucking sound. Just like you said, we stayed there for a while, but we we moved around in that area for a lot longer and we never heard that noise again. We yeah. never. So it either <sighs> turned into fucking vapor or <laughs> flew away without making a noise because it was loud about to come out of the woods and get us and then nothing. And this was on a road that to me, I listened back to some of our audio and I start to wonder, was it not as quiet as I thought it was? Um, because maybe you can hear cars from Highway 51 and off in the distance and stuff like that. But at the time, right there in the woods, it seems like you would have been able to hear if there was an animal like panting or yeah. something. Like had they set and rest because the deer would be scared of you. That's why it stopped. I mean, my cousin, not us. <laughs> but <laughs> Look, if, if we even want to pretend it's a deer, when we were at the Myrtles, a deer came running up out of the woods at us. And we were just like, oh, yeah. my God, it was a deer. Let's go and follow it. And we got we were following it. And that deer turned around and started grunting at us. So, like, deer, deer don't play around. They're like, oh, hell no. I'm bigger than you. Come closer. <laughs> I will show That's you. That's true. But it, yeah. it scampered away when it when it realized, holy shit, there's humans. It was like, nope. And it ran off. It didn't realize that we were crazy idiots, too, and we're going to go chasing after it. But it moved quickly. This thing that was in the woods by the smokestacks was coming out towards us. And it it stopped somewhere that we never saw it. And your cousin had that Mac Daddy flashlight that was like a spotlight. So it illuminated that. You remember that? Because I was like, damn, girl, where'd you get that flashlight? I need one of those. It illuminated that whole area, and we didn't see any eyes. No. Not a pair. We didn't. It was very, very weird. I just want to let people know that we we're not stamping this completely paranormal, but it was a very weird event. You had to have been there to have heard this thing rushing at you and then all of a sudden just gone, just Just gone, just gone. In a previous podcast that I had mentioned where a mysterious man was appearing in a bed and once somebody freaked out, that mysterious man just disappeared. Yeah. So as soon as you acknowledge it and yell at it, it's like, right. I'm scared nope. of you too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Goodbye. So either way, we heard this noise out in the woods and not to mention, you know, the very, very low light. And all we had on us was like pocket knives. So we weren't going to take down some stag in the woods. So mm. we noped out of the idea of going further into the brush or into the woods and seeing where the actual ruins were. We did hang out right there on that path for quite some time, like we said, and there was no more kind of activity. So we then made our way back down the path, going back kind of towards the car. You know, we went to the open field. And we're just going to hang out there where it's safe away from wild animals. And look, we're not going to enter into the woods anyways, because we don't really know what's in there. So we made it as we're walking back to the open field, though, we have all kinds of stuff on us. Very early on in our paranormal explorations, we were very intrigued by every little gadget that we saw, like on TV and whatnot. So we had a lot of meters and stuff, stuff that we still use today, but we use, you know, like we don't use the same ones all the time, but we had like a K2 meter or something in our hands and we're walking back to the open field. And then all of a sudden the light goes off on the K2 meter. And it's not like we're just having our own personal conversation the whole time. We're, we're constantly like, who's here with us and what's going on? And can anybody talk to us? You know, we're trying to make this time productive. And then all of a sudden a K2 meter goes off, but it's just in our hand kind of resting down by our legs because none of us are very tall. And so it's kind of short to the ground. So we come to the conclusion that maybe this is a child. That we kind of ran into. There was the legend of the serial killer that killed women and children there. So we were going with that. We knew nothing about the little boys that had possibly drowned nearby and been uh, passed away from accidental gunfire. We didn't know about that yet. That came later. Like today. <laughs> Much later. <laughs> and like a week ago when I discovered this story. Um, so we started trying to communicate with him with the meter. 
And uh, along with the meter, we we pulled out like a little mag-like flashlight that we had. One of the ones that you can kind of twist the top and make it loose for them, and then they can they can mess with it. And I don't even remember. Do you remember? Did we did we loosen the top for him or? I don't think it was because I think at that time we were still under the impression that the button had to be. Pushed, pushed or something to, order, yeah even if it was lightly unscrewed that's the technique that a lot of paranormal investigators have used is that they take those mag light flashlights and they loosen the top to where the point that it's not on but it you know a light little touch could turn it on and then you set it down and you don't touch it which right. is exactly what we did whether it was loosened or not i can't remember but the flashlight was placed on the ground near the meter so that we could hopefully correspond the two reactions. And we thought that this little boy would love the idea of like making these lights uh, light up and stuff. And it did work because we sat there and had a conversation for like 30 minutes with this little boy spirit right. where we asked him yes or no questions or we gave we gave him questions like how old are you and we're gonna go we're gonna name off numbers and you light it up when we hit the number you know that type thing and he responded perfectly in sync with our questions yeah it was really wild o over those 30 minutes we found out that he was like maybe five yeah, we got an and age, roughly. Roughly, and that he believed that he was lost. Lost. He yeah. didn't quite understand that he had died. Yeah. He also claimed that he wasn't scared and that he had lots of friends there that were just like him. And I know that sounds completely crazy that we got all this information from lights, but like I said, we were asking yes or no questions or we were asking questions that then we would feed the answers and ask him to light it up when we hit the right response. Right. And that's how we got all that information from him. Yeah, basically it was a guide. Uh, we were trying to guide him into giving us answers one way or another. You know, light it up if you're a boy. Don't light it up if you're a girl. Okay, you know. Yeah. You're a boy. Got it. Right. That's how we went. Now, we couldn't go through the entire list of names for boys, so we never got a name. No. We didn't. And we did ask some other more detailed questions because we had audio recorders yeah. on us. So we were hoping for responses on that. Yeah. But yeah. we were really trying to work with the lights and it worked for so long. Yeah. Like he was giving us responses and he could turn it on and yeah. off. It wasn't oh, yeah. like it just came on and it stayed on and we were like, oh, that's the answer, you know. Uh, right. No, we asked him to turn it on. And then we said, now you have to turn it off to show us that it's really you. And that's what he would do. It was amazing. It was. And my memory of it was that the uh, interchange was pretty quick. Yes. We weren't having to wait around for it because he's answering them so quickly. Yeah. It was, it was bizarre. Like he wanted someone out there asking him questions. Yes. He was waiting to be heard. I would agree. It felt like he was like, hey, you guys are fun. I want to talk to you or whatever. You know, like he yeah. was on board for this conversation. And then after about 30 minutes and getting all this information from him, the, the activity kind of did start to slow down right, right at the same time that we started to hear coyotes off in the distance. And then the coyotes started to... <laughs> then they show and up then, and fuck up the party. <laughs> they fuck up the party big time. We started hearing them and we're like, everything's cool. It's fine. They're way out in the distance. They're not going to do anything. Yeah, coyotes are in the, that area. It's not mm -hmm. a big deal. They're going to... They're they're hunting or whatever off in the tree right. lines, off in the distance. And that's what it sounded like for so long. And then it felt like it got closer and closer and we're a little like, well, we are out in the woods in the middle of nowhere, so maybe this isn't such a safe area. Plus, his his information started to slow down. Yeah, he started to die. Well, Ooh. Uh, sorry. <laughs> or maybe he started to disappear. Well, you know, so we didn't know this at the time. It just seemed like activity slowing down, and we don't know if it's because we're losing focus from what's going on because we're focused on the coyotes or if it's he's vamping out of the situation as well. But later when we reviewed, like, our audio, we were getting responses from him like, there's a bad spirit yeah. here and watch out and you got to get out and stuff like right. that. He so was trying to warn it, us. It's almost like he, he was getting just as scared as we were. 
yeah, I totally 100% agree because that moment in time has been imprinted on my brain. Like, yeah. Like other horrific memories that I've had of some of the places that we've been to. It was just such a bizarre moment. We were interacting with the spirit. Everything was great. The information was flowing. Then all of a sudden it started to get distant and less frequent and the coyotes and then the coyotes were closer. Yeah. And, and we weren't 100% aware of this, but he's giving us responses that are like, you got to get out of here. You, yeah. I mean, but he wasn't touching the light anymore. He was yeah. nowhere. He wasn't in that area anymore, but we could still hear him through the audio. As, as if like, I don't have time mm -hmm. for games anymore. These lights were fun because he's a, he's a five-year-old or he's young, right. you know, and they enjoy those like noise and lights right. and things like that. So he's like, I don't have time for this anymore, but I can tell you something bad's going down. You yeah. gotta get out of here. That's why, like I said, this location isn't on any kind of you're not even supposed to right. be there. Um, so, I mean, it's not on a top most haunted list or anything. It can't be. And right. It can't be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also, this was so early on in investigations, and we've been to some crazy great places since then. But this place, yeah. the energy was just like, and the activity that we had going on there, you know, it's really, really impressive. It is. One of the things that's super weird about this is that you're in a completely uncontrolled environment because you're outdoors, in the woods, in an area that is off limits. Yeah. You're not at a place that you've rented. No. You're not at a lockdown. You don't you don't have the keys to the place right. so, that keep you safe inside. So those devil worshipers could have been there and stuff like that. You know, you could have been invading on somebody else's space. Weren't we in a cemetery one time and then like Another group of people showed up. Yes, ma'am, we were. I don't think I was there, but Hi. you were. No, we were there. You're talking about the couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we went to that one place. Uh, it was another Salem, um, but it was, I think, in Brownsville or something, a cemetery we had been hearing about. And we went there. It was so, 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 so dark. And we started creeping around in the cemetery, and then the guys came walking down the oh, road like drunk yeah, yeah, as yeah. fuck. That definitely. You remember that? And I'm like, zoop, behind a gravestone. I don't see them. They don't see me. And, and you're standing up like, what the fuck are you doing? And the guys are like, oh, see y'all. And I'm like, oh, my God, Wendy, duck, 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 duck. And she's like, no, fuck them. I'm like, no, so, no, 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 I mean, duck. they had already spotted us. So, it, you know, you just, you just got to leave, okay? <laughs> They're going to harass you, so just just go. But we were in a cemetery another yeah. time, and people we know came in from the opposite side of, oh, of the that cemetery. One. And we're yes. fucking making a joke fun. of it. But I thought that you had went out one time and ran into, like, a young group of people. But maybe that was just a Facebook comment that I'm like, I don't know, imagining as a real event. <laughs> I'm pretty sure every time I went to a cemetery, you were with me. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think that we must have posted about a place and some people asked us about it and said they had been there, too. Okay. And, may, and maybe I just thought, what if we go there one night and they're there, too? Uh, yeah. Like, what are we supposed to do? Y'all stay on your the side. Battles. <laughs> yeah, the battles of the paranormal investigation groups, you know? Ooh. Star turf. Get out of here. Good TV show. Promise. Yeah. Uh, and back to the smokestacks. We heard the coyotes and shit was kind of escalating. And so we were like, well, we got to go. So we were forced to wrap it up. We told the little boy that we'd become we'd come back later. We even had time. We took the time to like ask him, what would you like us to bring you? You know, and so we said we'd bring him a toy. So, yeah, we returned during the daytime because hold on before you go into that. I don't I know that those things were asked, but I was so panicked about those damn coyotes that I don't remember those words coming out of anyone's mouths. I remember thinking. Any second, those coyotes are going to be at us. I even remember us running the fuck out of there because it seemed like they were on us. And then as soon as we got over that fence, they stopped. Not another fucking noise. Zero. Yep. Just like that goose deer. 
Right, exactly. The fucking <laughs> noises those things were making, like they were chasing us, the panting. I fucking felt his breath. And I might have been imagining it because I was just so terrorized by the fact that it was behind me. <laughs> but where did those noises go? They were so behind us. Yeah, because as soon as we got back to the car and we were putting our stuff into the car, my cousin had a separate vehicle. I spent a minute talking to her. We both spent a minute yeah. talking to her and saying goodbye to her. And and you can talk about what you saw. Or is that what you were going to say? Is that what you're thinking? I guess you could see the look on my face. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was, was one of the most visual, I guess, paranormal experiences that I had had yes. so far of our explorations. And it blew my mind that I was I was seeing this and nobody else saw this. At that time. No, right. Exactly. At that yeah. time. I mean, it's still like, I still remember it. I still remember how it looked. Her cousin had more of like a, a an SUV style truck, right? Explorer. She had like a expedition, yeah, like a Ford maybe? Explorer. Uh, expedition. It was a big That's one. What I'm trying to yes, think of. the really big one. And she was yeah. near her vehicle, and I was near mine with Wendy. And I think I was in the Honda. I don't think I was in the Ford. Was I in the Ford? I think it was in the Honda. I have no idea if you are, I drove. I think it was the Honda, but maybe you drove. I don't know. For whatever reason, my car doesn't even exist to me. I just know that me and you had our backs to it, and we were looking at your cousin with her back to her vehicle. And as we're saying, wow, that was crazy. I can't believe this. And the coyotes just stopped. But all of this you know, conversation with the boy, like we were kind of recapping. Yeah, we had a whole conversation about it. I saw this dark small figure in your cousin's back seat slunk like it would just it slunked down into the seat as if it was like I'm here oh she sees me I'm hiding and it just yeah. went down and I couldn't do anything but just stand there and watch it I was so paralyzed by the fact that I just saw that and nobody else did am I in this world what the fuck is happening <laughs> nobody else saw that but we d we did inform her of it, correct? Yes, I'm sure we did. Yes, and she <laughs> we did inform her that we saw this, and uh, she's had experiences at her own home yes. and stuff like that. So th this wasn't. It's not like we we let her on a path to go down the street with something evil. You know, she she knows what she's walking into, and she could handle it. Do you remember? She said while we were out there in the field, "You can come home with me." I can help you. Oh, God. I, do, I don't remember her saying that. She told him that she could help him is what she said. But that totally seems like a my family move. <laughs> Like taking home every stray cat, but their ghost. <laughs> so the ghost boy in the backseat of her car is like, I mean, she was probably fine to take that shit home. I mean, like, who knows? And I'm sure she handled it greatly. I don't know what happened after that. I did not expect to see anything like that, especially just like in somebody's vehicle. Somebody that I just very recently met and this being like my second time being out with them. And I'm like, I don't want to sound like a lunatic or anything, but I just saw something in your backseat just fyi you know you have a ghost going home with you just so you know all right bye, bye. <laughs> and i will never forget that when you started getting to that point i was looking away because i'm like i don't even know if i'm going to bring this up i'm gonna wait and see what wendy says about that <laughs> well and and i can't bring it up because i didn't you didn't see it myself. no but that's you the thing saw it. it's so bizarre yeah. because i was the only one to see it and the whole time i'm witnessing that i'm like what is wrong with me how come i'm the only no. one i'm looking at you i'm looking at her i'm like nobody else sees what's going on what yeah, but she and i are engrossed in you know saying our goodbyes and like thank yous and proper or goodbye, you know, whatever, ending of the night. And you are not necessarily a part of that. And then so you have the opportunity to kind of your eyes wonder and then you see something. But like I said, yeah, I'm not surprised that a family member of mine into the paranormal invited this shit to follow her yeah, right. home. It sounds like something, some kind of shit that I would pull. And I don't think she was surprised that it followed her home. I, I mean... Shit, I wouldn't be either. When we were at the birdcage and there was activity of that little boy, I mean, all I wanted to be like is, do you need somewhere to go? I can take care of you. It's all children's spirits. And, you know, we, we watch all the shows. And so we're aware that more demonic entities can 
show themselves as, as a child. child spirit, yeah. they would totally get me because I'm the first one to take that little stray in and, and want to take care of them. And I, obviously my cousin is exactly the same way. Yeah, that's really sweet. You guys are very, very loving and very open to that sort of thing. Of course, that's not Our- the first thing that I thought of. <laughs> I saw something hunkering down in her back seat and I'm like, do you know what you got coming home with you? <laughs> Because, <laughs> but as soon as it starts oh biting God. us at night and stuff like that, we're like, you got to go. I'm going to save this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we were very connected to the little boy and spirit and we wanted to go back and visit him some more. So we did go back during the daytime when we also felt more comfortable kind of exploring the wooded area and making it out to the ruins. Yes. And realizing at that point in time how smart we were to not attempt to try and figure that shit out at night because we would have died. Yes. <laughs> we would have broke a fucking leg or something because there are just wide open gaps in the ground from, I guess, wells that were left or a basement area. I'm not really sure, but there are openings in the damn ground that we would yeah. have totally have not seen. And so it was so smart to go back during the daytime and it's really quiet. Quiet and was. peaceful back there. And so it felt very just serene in a sense to be around history. Is that a weird thing to say? I just had a really random thought because of the noise that we heard in the woods. That's the whole reason why we didn't attempt to go further into the woods and yeah. investigate. What if that was the little boy at that point too? Or just some kind of spirit that was like, you don't need to go in here yeah, because you're right. clumsy as fuck. Stop. All right, you three girls don't look down. So get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but that could have actually been a very positive thing. Yeah. You know, something that was trying to warn us. And I didn't even put that together until just now. I did not either. No, nope. you're That's... so right about that, though. Something that stopped us is said, you know, you're dummies. Mm-hmm. Like, don't come in here not knowing what you're looking at, at least. Had we been there during the day and then tried to come back right. during the night, like we would know to watch for those holes. It would have been a different story. Yeah, but uh, just never having been there before and just thinking that it's these two towers of smoke towers. Yeah. And that's it. That's we it. We would have fucking broken an ankle or died. Oh, yeah. One of those. It would have been a rough, a real rough night and a lot of explaining that neither of us wanted to do. To the to Shelby County Sheriff's Department. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we did go back during the daytime. We did bring a toy back for the little boy. Immediately, we made our way to the woods, though, and because we had never seen these ruins. We found them. And I remember thinking that it didn't feel like dark or scary to me or anything like that. It did feel very kind of serene in a sense, but also just very eerie seeing these old structures kind of in, you know, taken up over by the trees and whatnot, just completely abandoned and the woods kind of engulfing them and then we found like you said the holes in the ground that led to lower areas so it was a, a mega relief that we did not explore this on a deeper level in the middle of the night no doubt we did at times feel i mean we very much most of the time felt like we weren't alone during this investigation, even during the daytime. Oh, it's yeah. like you could hear whispering all around you. Yeah. Like, how do you explain that? But you couldn't make out exactly what they were saying. And so there's houses directly across the street, maybe like three houses or something like that. But when we pulled up, there was nobody outside and it just didn't sound right. It sounded like legit whispering right near Whispers. you. Look, it's so bizarre because I live, I live in a very, very populated neighborhood. There are people all over the place. I don't hear whispering when I go outside. I can clearly hear if someone's talking, yeah. you know, but the whispers that you heard, it was almost as if it was on the wind. Yeah. It was a weird, hushed whispering and it came at you at different times as if you were like, you were headed in one direction that maybe that's not the right way. Turn and go this way. And yeah. you start walking that way and hear them again. It was almost like a guiding voice. It's something that you would have read in a in a mystery book as if the ghost of somebody was guiding you towards <laughs> something, you know? You make an excellent point. We take a lot of walks in our neighborhood at night. Because we work, you know, and then we come home and take walks and whatnot. It's dark out. It's yeah. creepy. It's quiet. But there are tons of houses. I mean, right. I live in a subdivision, but I don't hear whispering. 
I don't, I don't right. hear ever any of those people outside. So unless the people directly across the street from the smokestacks are just out to fuck with anybody that they see park in front of that place, <laughs> you know, unless they've got that plan in their mind, it's the fucking woods. They are weird and it is creepy. And it's just, and we had gotten EVPs from our night investigation that were things that were like the little boy had told us, you know, to kind of watch out. And there was, we, we talked about that before. He was concerned. There also seemed to be a female voice that had come yeah. in. She was very protective of the little boy and she seemed to think that we shouldn't be there. Yes. And then there were also like male voices. So not the female, not the little boy, but there was also other voices that thought that we shouldn't be there as well. They were all like, you need to get the fuck out of here. You don't belong here type thing. But why? But why? Do you remember that like bricked bunker that we found that was yeah. like flooded? Yes. Well, at one point before we got to that bunker, there was, you know, like I what I guess what might be a well. I'm not really sure. I had put my camera down in there to try to see yeah. through the viewfinder, but not have to stick my head down there and see what's down there. And then as soon as I stuck my camera down into this hole, the battery was completely drained. Yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. And and I remember, remember there was like a rush of cold air, but of course there would be coming out of the ground. But at the same time, my battery was drained. And so I had to replace my battery. And then we stood in front of the structure that you're talking about. And it's like there were walls on two sides of it. It's a long rectangle type building but it's opened at the end we were standing at and then it's opened on the far other end of it and then it was just deep enough to collect maybe about a foot two foot of water i don't know we didn't go in <laughs> oh, no that's not happening but uh, <laughs> there was water that had collected inside of it and it definitely created like an echo effect when you yeah. talked into it but I remember we got like a weird kind of vibe from it. So we stood outside of it and we were yeah. asking questions within, hey, is anybody here or anything like that? You had your melmeter, uh, not your melmeter, your tri-field. Yes, uh, which measures electromagnetic field. We were standing on the outside of it and then you like called into it or one of us did and asked if anybody was there. And we heard a response with our own ears. Own ears, yeah. And then it was as if something had kind of rushed out of it all of a oh, yeah. sudden. Oh, and yeah. And that's when we got a hit on the EMF meter as well, the trifield meter as well that I was holding. So that was super fucking cool. That was great. Yeah, that was amazing. It was kind of like we scared it out of its hole or whatever. But, um, but it was then, a woman's voice that we heard. Yes. Uh -huh. I totally remember that. We got a EVP too, or I thought we did, or maybe we just remember hearing the voice together and thinking that it said help. It was just a, a woman's cry almost, but it was, yeah. it seemed like it was a one word. I don't remember. Was it an EVP or is it what we thought we heard? We interpreted what we thought we heard. Okay. So I think it what must have been like help or something like that because it was, it felt very clear at that moment. We heard a lot of whispering around yeah. us that we couldn't make out, but in that moment when the EMF meter went off too and stuff, we it's almost like we knew what they were saying. Right. It was like Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we got a bunch of EVPs from the daytime investigation as well as the nighttime investigation. Yeah. It, it was crazy because it was like at times we got EVPs that said things like, help me and I'm in pain. And then we would get EVPs that were like, go away, stop it. You know, and they, they would very vary from like very low EVPs to almost like a whisper to even loud EVPs yeah. where you could hear them plain as day. We got one loud EVP that said randomly, and I know this makes no sense, but it's so fucking loud. I'm talking and then this word cuts in that isn't us and then you talk. So you can hear my voice and then you can hear your voice. And in between, there's this voice that doesn't sound like either of us, though it sounds like a female female and it just wow. says coming a, a female or a kid i guess yeah. a small kid could sound like a female i don't really know and i think we got a very loud no at one point too so they vary from whispers to loud voices to telling you i need your help to telling you get the fuck out of here i don't want you around it was yes. very just like all over the place right and it wasn't like a bipolar ghost or anything these voices were not the same no. it was different entities 
trying to yeah. reach us at the same time. Female, male, child. We heard all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we went back to where we had talked to the little boy the first time we were going to leave him his toy and everything. We tried for like 20 minutes to contact yeah. him and we got nothing from him the second time that we went there. Nothing. Completely silent yeah. at that time trying to reach him. But tons of stuff from the other people. Who are these people? <laughs> Who are they? I mean, like the, there should only be technically, if you read, you know, look into the history, possibly the one female that passed away, possibly then all the men that passed away on the plane. And so that would give you a bunch of different right. voices and then the little boy stories, but right. it just was odd. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense of who exactly is there. The energy is kind of off the charts and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I find it very possible that people have gone into these woods hung out at these ruins and performed some kind of rituals that might have opened portals to places and then they didn't close them properly. That makes a lot of sense. And that's something that we've kind of felt that that might have been going on there, especially after our yeah. second time there, because there was so much activity and it was uh, unexplained. There were voices coming through the trees, but there are no bodies there that belong to those voices. It was a very creepy place. Yeah, and mostly just creepy because there's no explanation explanation for it as well like it doesn't make sense so you don't really know what you're looking at or what you're dealing with just like walking into the woods at night so uh, while nothing major ever happened to us at this um, location I mean there was no bricks thrown or anything like that we did feel like when we went there during the daytime I remember I don't know if you remember this we felt very like physically drained yeah. and it was still in February. It was later February. And like I said, the South is weird about with their seasons. So it was a warmer day, but I remember that I left there so fucking tired. Those chemicals and that type of materials that those chemicals are um, made up of, I think they leave an imprint. Yeah. You know, they leave some kind of mark and they draw some kind of energy. And and that's what's fueling and heightening and maybe drawing things to this area if it's not, you know, what I said before. Because, you know, if you're into some kind of going into the woods with your cloak on and stuff, it, it is a cool spot to go to because the the, these old stone walls that are left and whatnot, mm. that'd be a fun place to do your devil worshiping or whatever you're doing or anything. It seems like a, an interesting spot to do that. Yeah, it's not just a plain old background. So it's kind of cool to, to go to these old ruins of this building, but also just the imprint. I mean, nobody was willing to build there. Right. After this plant, this powder plant was there. So, I mean, like, imagine what kind of residual energy this place might have left behind just yeah. by the types of materials that were produced there. Right. So not good. Toxic. Yeah, toxic. Ooh, that's a good way of describing it. It's just kind of a toxic area for all kinds of activity. So, yeah. uh, you know, we had a bunch of disembodied voices from the location, and then we had the experience with the flashlight session, I guess you would call it, which was very impressive. I've never, we've never had anything like that again. No. Never anything so responsive. No. With the flashlight. And I just really think that what's going on in this location, it's something that nobody's going to be, ever be able to answer. It's not a documented event that is causing this activity. Right. It's definitely something that mm, some trespassers <laughs> <laughs> caused or it's just the residue left behind from what did take place yeah, there. Sure. So also, again, the disclaimer, this is a public service announcement. This area, it's not public property. You are trespassing on the area if you go on there without permission. Uh, again, I don't have any idea how Wendy and Chris got all this information <laughs> or how they were there. My name's Tina. Um right. Am I Tina or are you Trish? I mean, yes, you're yeah, Tina. Okay. I'm Trish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the statues of limitations for trespassing. So I, I actually just, we just made this whole story That's up. Right. 
the smokestacks were oh crazy like we had been to graveyards before that that had very interesting stories and we got great evidence from those places too the graveyards that we went to but the smokestacks were really here it is you went looking for it like you said we didn't get bricks or rocks or anything thrown at us that we could document for the world but the things that we experienced were so intriguing and deep that it was like if I was writing a book, that would maybe be the defining moment in my paranormal career. It was. It wasn't that extreme. Yeah. Yes. That's why when someone asked about it and I was very vague with them, I it was because I was like, I'm going to tell that story. <laughs> because it, it, it was, uh, you know, when we first put it out on our website so many years ago, we were a little concerned about local law enforcement being like, you're not supposed to be there or something like that. And so we were really like, we called it by a different name or we were like, should we re even have this on our website? You know, we weren't supposed to be there, but. But yeah, I was going to take it down because of the threats that I was getting on our email. I just changed the name of it. Yeah, but it was such an extreme location for us, and it deserves to have its story told. And it's not like we're the only people that go there without permission. Right. As far as I know, you barely even know who owns the property. Like, they don't make it known no. necessarily. It's owned by so-and-so. Call them if you need to go on the land, you know, or whatever. And it's right across the street from some residents residential houses. So please don't tell me that they don't go over there and play some softball in the middle, it's you know, a big during a field. family picnic or something like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just the way things are out where we lived. Like, it's an open space. We don't care who owns it. We're going to go over there and use that space. Now, of course, we're going there for kind of a different purpose. But at the same time, we're not harming anything. Right. We are simply walking through and experimenting and we are not going to hold anybody no. accountable for anything that might happen. Like ghost coyotes. Right, ghost coyotes. It's not your fault. Right. I don't recall as we crossed into that area, seeing any no trespassing signs either. So we were well, ah, we were well within our rights to go into that area. Just going to. I don't, I don't recall that either as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I had a bad set of glasses. Me too. Back then, I but sure I'm did. not really sure. Uh, I didn't see it. Yep. So it's fine. And we're not the only people, like I said, that have been there. And I'm sure those people know that as well. Our cars were parked right on the road. Yep. If the Shelby County uh, Sheriff's Department were concerned about it, they'd ride up and down the street all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Or the neighbors would have called the cops. Yeah. Nobody cares. And we just told the story of what happened. All we did was walk in some woods and get creeped out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. And we left. I mean, but it was an amazing experience for us. So when this uh, episode comes out, everyone, and we start to post pictures and, and there'll be our pictures because I'm sure there's not that many pictures of true. the... Of the smokestacks of Millington. Yeah. So there'll be our pictures and then we're going to post evidence from our investigation. By ours, I mean Trish and Tina's investigation. But uh, <laughs> you have to remember, this is probably a year, two years into us getting into formal paranormal investigations where we're actually collecting evidence through recorders and video and stuff like that. So I watched it today on YouTube and there is a lot of great stuff on there, but this was before the ability to edit into clips, like what you thought they were saying, you know, when you put yeah, like, right. you like type it in, you know, um, or so, so the clips were very short. Yeah. They were two seconds to four seconds long because we like to cut it down to exactly what you needed to hear because we were afraid that any other outside noise would confuse you and you wouldn't hear it yeah. because they were kind of low whispers and we didn't have a way of tagging when the EVP was coming in. So we cut it down just to the EVP. So when we share stuff, uh, it's going to be like that. It's not our best editing skills, but you have to remember this is 2011 right. and we weren't quite there with the iMovie and whatnot, but there's still some really powerful shit that came from that stuff. And we have a couple of gr the great videos from the flashlight yeah. episode or whatever session that was going on, which I watched today. And we were like total moms during the whole uh 
thing. Every time the little boy spirit would light it up and then turn it off as we asked, we were like, yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like when you're teaching your toddler, you know, how to use the potty yes. or whatever. I mean, like, that's what we sounded like, but we're all moms, and so that seems normal for us. But yeah. we will definitely share all that evidence that we can on Instagram and all forms of social media. And this is one of our, I think, top Memphis locations. This one is a very mysterious place. For unknown reasons. And it's just a, a stone's throw away from Memphis, Tennessee. So if you're... <laughs> yeah. And it's free right? to trespassers. To trespassers. Um... <laughs> Go and visit Graceland, go to Beale Street, then come out to uh, Justin Timberlake's part of the the land in Millington and visit Shelby Forest. It's a beautiful park. And right around the corner are the super haunted smokestacks. (laughs) Maybe Justin Timberlake went there. Ooh. If Justin Timberlake is listening to this podcast, if you could please email us at thecreaturesofthenightparanormal.com. And tell us your haunted story, because we know that area of Millington slash Shelby County is haunted. So you've got to have a story. Oh, my gosh. Um, That would be awesome. Anybody related to him, a very distant cousin, anybody. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. Oh, my gosh. So we have tons of form of social media. You can go to C-O-T-N underscore paranormal for most things like Twitter and Instagram or Facebook. Maybe that underscore doesn't need to be there. I'm not really (laughs) sure. Why don't you just try it out? It's with or without that. And you can leave us comments and you can follow us. You can also go to anywhere that you listen to this podcast. You can rate and review and subscribe. If you want to go to creaturesofthenightparanormal.com. But you can go under products and you can buy t-shirts that say Creatures of the Night Paranormal. Or some of them say some funny sayings from some of the shows we went to. to. (laughs) The shows that we went to? I visited that show. (laughs) I it in my in mind. My mind. Uh- <laughs> some of the stuff that we've said um and if you don't think you're funny <laughs> don't buy the shirt <laughs> if, if you think all of this is dumb and stupid we don't mind getting some negative feedback as long as you do it privately please if you will email us at creatures of the night paranormal at gmail.com you may tell us whatever you'd like you can tell us to stop selling t-shirts you can tell us smoke sacks aren't haunted we won't believe nope. you but uh, <laughs> you could do whatever you want privacy (laughs) that would be polite and the best way to do it yeah and so that's it you can that that's all i got for my story it was a phenomenal location from a place that we are from and there you go but uh one thing that i wanted to mention since we were talking since you decided to tell the story of the smokestacks is we have over 666 clips out there on youtube for you to go and enjoy our podcast is on youtube as well but i'm not going to be able to get everything posted for um, social media so if you want to hear all of everything that we've found while at the smokestacks go to cotn paranormal at youtube and reminder it was from way back in the day when we didn't know how to actually make clips like we do now we weren't as hip with the movie maker itunes movies as we are now don't pretend like it was a thing back then you don't know it was it i don't i don't i was just putting that stuff on youtube and was like good done it's done That took me 40 hours to put one clip up. Well, to be a little like, hey, we were trying to help you out, is back in the day, we used to not want to necessarily feed people what we thought the EVPs were saying. So we didn't so much try to edit them telling you what we thought it was saying. Um, those, a lot of those are in the description title on, and on what we think they're saying. If we don't think, if we're not really sure, then maybe we didn't say it. Anyways, uh, if you go to our YouTube page, you can go under playlists and then you look for smokestacks. How many clips are on there? Did you happen to notice? Was there? I did not count them. No, but it went for but there was a, a good lot, right? while. And yes, we will definitely share what we can or what really sounds good to social media as well. Yeah, that'll be fun. (laughs) (laughs) No, it will be fun. Shut up. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right. Well, with that, I hope that you enjoyed listening to our episode. We have many more shows rolling out because we are not going to stop. Every Ever. week you get a new story. Tell them to email us and tell us to shut the fuck up. We are going to keep going with this. So thanks again for listening. Thank you for listening. All right. Bye.